Right, in my last video, part one of making the brass fire piston, I made the lower half of the assembly on the Chinese mini lathe. And now I'm going to show the last part, part two, and that's making the piston assembly. Now I've made the piston assembly out of an old fire poker and a solid brass furniture handle, but you can actually make these out of just solid brass bar and put on whatever handle you like. And if you don't want to use brass, you can actually use stainless steel or aluminium. Um, some people make them out of wood, and I've even seen some made out of perspex or polycarbonate, so you can actually see the ignition flame when it goes off. And at the end of this video, I'll show a demonstration of this one in use, and you can see how it works. So now I'm going to make the piston part. You can actually make this out of a solid piece of uh, brass bar, um, same length all the way down. But I've got a scrap fire poker, so I'm going to use that one. And now I use my live centre again with a different end. And turn this diameter down to fit the pipe. So it's a really good fare, you can aim for about 2,000 clearance if you want. And then I can push it back in the drawers now and do the grooves. And you can get boxes of O-rings on eBay, um, they're not very expensive and I've collected quite a few up. If you get the tube, you want to select an O-ring which is nearly the same size as the ball. It can be a bit under, but not over. And that'll be the right O-ring to actually use on the piston. And to do the two O-ring grooves, I use this tool here, which I use as the part off with a two millimeter wide um, insert. And again, I'll put links to that tool below.
and this is the piston from the one I made previous you want the o-rings back a bit from the front face because there's a small bore in the front there in which to put the char cloth so I machined the first o-ring groove about eight millimeter from the end face So I'll do a test cut at first to what I think should be the depth or nearly the depth, um, probably a bit shallow. Try the o-ring on there and put the pipe down over and see if the squeeze is right on the o-ring. If it's too tight then I take the o-ring out again and take another skim until I get it dead right. And you can use the live centre again to give it a bit of stability. So I can feel that that o-ring is larger than the diameter of the um, piston and you can measure it with a micrometer if you want. And then I can actually try that piston and I can feel that that's going to be perfect in one go. So when checking that make sure you have a nice chamfer on the actual um, tube and if it was too tight like I say to push down try a bit of Vaseline or silicon grease on it first before taking any more off you want just enough squeeze like that I can actually feel that's very good it's not actually shearing the o-ring with the um, tube and I can do the other o-ring groove exactly the same and when you're dealing with o-rings like this you need to be able to get this o-ring back out of that groove and I make up a tool like this it's just a piece of stainless steel wire thick wire bent over at the end a hand on this end and the blade is um, flattened off and rounded off so it's not sharp and you can actually use that one to get under the o-ring it's a bit fiddly on this diameter but you've got to work it under the o-ring like that and then pull the o-ring carefully off and now I'll make a note of that diameter of that o-ring groove and I can do the other one exactly the same and there's no hard and fast uh, rules on the actual position of the o-rings I just do the second one about a hundred thou back from the front one So if you're new to machining o-ring grooves it's best to actually cut shallow first and try it if it's tight like I say you can take the o-ring out and go in a little bit more maybe five or ten thou each time until you get it dead right you don't want to go too deep otherwise you have to remake the piston and over a period of time and after making many different components with o-ring grooves you gradually get an eye for it to be able to get them very close first time like I did with this one. So now I'll just deburr those grooves 
and I use a small triangular file for that. And just a little deeper on the end there. So now I'm going to drill a certain depth in the front here for the actual char cloth to go in and I do that to the diameter so that there's about 10 thou wall thickness. And that end is drilled to about three or four millimeter deep on the bore. So that's what it looks like now with the O-rings in. And now I turn it round and turn this end here to the handle. And again I'm using this old furniture handle, nice solid brass, and I drill this one out to suit that piston bar. So to save time that one's turned down. And to hold that brass handle for drilling I put the radius of the handle in the first notch on the jaws. So that one trues it up a bit. And then I bring the tailstock in or the live center in, lock the tailstock and then pull the handle out onto the live center as hard as I can and tighten up the jaws and that one should run fairly true but the drill will follow the hole that's already in there. And that's it, just be careful you don't drill right the way through. Then to finish off I put the handle on like that on the actual piston bar and heat it up and just run a bit of solder in there. And that's it. I soldered this one because the um, bar was a little bit loose on that drilled hole otherwise I'd have used Loctite 638 or you can obviously thread and fit the handle on the end. And the very last thing I do is turn up a piece of brass bar 
so it actually fits the drilled bore on the end here I drill it with a smaller hole through the center and then I part off about a millimeter and push that end in the bore at the end here and then that will create a lip on the end of the bore so when you put the char cloth into that bore it won't fall out in use so that's the collar finished there and drilled and it's a tight fit in that bore on the end of the piston there so I'll just put a chamfer on that one And I'm going to part it off so it's about a millimetre wide and I've put this drill up here to actually catch it when it comes off so I don't lose it. So now I'll put the piston in the vise here and I've got that little washer or bush. That one will go in the top of the fire piston there. And if it's a nice push fit you can actually just tap it home. If not you can just tap it in a bit like that, take the o-rings off and just run a little bit of solder around the gap or the um, diameter where it actually meets the bore. And then what I do is use a cone shaped burr tool in the um, cordless drill and just go from side to side like that on the end of the piston So it opens it out to a bit of a oval shape and this allows you to get the uh, hook in there to actually hook the char cloth out when it's ignited. So apart from a polish up on the buffing wheel it's finished. I put a bit of silicon grease around the o-rings and along the piston um, don't get it in the end where the char cloth goes and then it should push into the bore nicely and you should get compression like that if you've made a good job of it So this is the finished product. I did buy some char cloth on eBay because I didn't have time to make up my own. If you want to make up char cloth, all you need is pure cotton cloth. You put it in a tin like a pellet tin or an old tobacco tin with a very small drilled hole in it. And then you put it on top of a fire and let it smoke out of the hole. When the smoke is finished, you'll have char cloth inside. So it's basically burning it off or burning the cotton cloth off without any oxygen. Now some of you may be wondering what the screwed end is for on the fire piston. Well that's a decompression screw so you can actually pull the piston out of the um, fire piston housing or the tube or push it right the way home so the air comes out when you're pushing it in and then you can actually lock that one up and that makes the fire piston shorter for easier transportation. Plus the screwed end makes it easy, you can actually take this right the way out to clean the uh, bore inside um, if the actual char cloth falls out inside. So you, like I say, you can take that one right out and clean that out. And there's no hard and fast rules on the actual dimensions of a fire piston. 
I have just found that the 10 millimeter bore um, seems to be the best one for ignition and I've recently experimented a lot in making them. Many years ago I did make a wooden one and I had terrible trouble getting that one going. I think I only had it going once before I gave up on it and it's only recently that I've actually come back to making one and experimenting to see which one would be the most consistent in operation. And when you get them right, they're dead easy to use. The main part about the fire piston, like I said earlier, is the compression. You must have that compression, otherwise they won't work at all. And when you've bought some char cloth or made some, keep it in a nice dry place. You take a little piece like that and insert it in the bore. Like that. I said earlier about three millimeter deep on that bore, but you could go to four or five millimeter if you want to before putting that brass ring in. Like I say, there's no hard and fast rules. It's worth actually experimenting with them. And you only need to put that char cloth loosely in the end. You don't want to pack it in there tightly or um, use your fingers on it too much. And then you insert the piston. Place it on the table like that and then give it a nice hard whack on the actual handle pushing it down hard into that bore to get the compression and the ignition. And I'll just turn off the floodlight so you can actually see the ember when I get it going. So hold it at the base like that and give it a good whack. It didn't go that time. And there we go. You've got to have that char cloth fairly loose in there and sticking up a bit to get it to light nicely. And obviously you just hook that out then, maybe put it on another piece of char cloth and then in the nest of fire lighting material to get the fire going. So I'll just have another go with it. I've put the char cloth in that one. You can see there it's hanging out a bit at the end. I found that's the best way to have it loosely like that and it will actually catch the ignition. And when you get everything right and get the knack of it, you can get them going nearly every time. So if you make one of these up and you get good compression on it like that, whatever you do, don't give up on the actual fire starting with it. It might take several goes to actually get it going, but if you persevere, get the right conditions, you'll get them going. And I found one of the most important thing is to keep the char cloth in a sealed up bag like this because it has a tendency of taking on the moisture in the atmosphere. Keep it nice and dry and like I say the right conditions and you'll be really surprised at how easy it is to actually get them going.